to uh, welcome to my man cave I feel like I should do a brief video I've been contemplating some things and had some recent experiences and um, just felt like the Lord wanted me to make a video so I'll start by saying that this is a Honda Civic that I bought um, I don't know two or three months ago and it had a blown motor and I like to turn wrenches on the side I like to fix things it's just a hobby of mine not something I want to do as a living because to me that kind of takes all the fun out of it but here's the motor that came out of it that's a hole in the block so this uh, car when I bought it was dead so I got a junkyard motor and I put it in and I'm just putting it together and putting all the parts on it so I guess what I would um, I don't know, kind of make this video around the idea of is that I love fixing things. And where did I get that from? You know, that's a trait from God. And I've seen a lot of videos lately. Some of them have been about uh, near-death experiences. I've watched a lot about... Um, I was watching this thing the other day about a bounty hunter. And... Just recently, I've been watching some things about, uh, you know, homeless and how those people are living. And the lessons that I take away from all that is that from the near-death experience, one guy I particularly remember said that when he died and passed over, um, he met Jesus and was going through this life review, you know, and Jesus said to him that, it's not about religion, it's about love. And Jesus, when he was here, made it clear that <clears throat> if you love God and love your neighbor as yourself, you fulfilled the whole law, you've done the whole thing. Like, that is the, that is the most simplistic breakdown of what the law was pointing us towards. And in this guy's life review, all these life situations would come up and he would say things like, um, you know, how did you help your fellow man in this situation? You know, how, how were you loving? How were you representing me? Because, um, me personally, my life experience has been that church and religion, uh, have been empty and dead and condemning. But, when I received grace and mercy, when God delivered me and spared my life, when I didn't deserve it, those are the things that got me to change direction. You know, it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. And this morning I was praying and I read some scriptures. I don't, I don't know what to put in the background, so I apologize. Um, I read some scriptures and... Uh, I was just really thinking on this, you know, how you treat people, how you, um, uh, what did he say in the near-death experience? It was basically, you know, how, how have you treated your fellow man? <clears throat> and today I had all these plans, you know, I wanted to work on this car, I wanted to put some things together, but I just said, you know, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today? You know, what's on your heart? And today, I have talked to five or six different people um, and just felt like I was being compassionate towards them. Like I was, I was interested in their life. I was talking to them and I was treating them in a godly way. And, um, you know, just trying to be kind to another human being. And I find that the darker this world gets, the easier it is to just get grumpy and mad and selfish and to treat people wrong. Um, you know, me specifically, I had a situation the other morning where um, I got really mad at somebody and then when I got to, you know, face to face with that person, I said in myself, I was like, you know what? How do I want somebody to treat me? How does God treat people? And I chose to forgive and forget, and I just let it go, and I just forgot it. And 
I had peace about it and it hasn't come up again. And I thought of that just because of some of the things that I've been watching recently. I saw, you know, like I brought up the bounty hunter guy. And I saw a situation where he was dealing with these very belligerent people. You know, people that were very frustrating, very um, hard to deal with. And he kept saying, you know, I'm going to tase you. If you, don't, <laughs> if you don't act right and cooperate, I'm going to tase you. He must have said he was going to tase him 30 times. But he showed so much restraint that he got his job done without ever tasing him. And you look at that and you're like... How would I react in that situation? Because I was thinking, you know what? I would have tased every last one of them. <laughs> but it's like that that reminded me of God because God doesn't... He's slow to wrath. He's slow to anger. And He's very patient with us. You know, and you have to think, like, how does God look at people? How does God um, treat people? You know, very patient, very... Uh, you know, the word that he gave me to look up this morning was restraint. You know, he restrains himself from pouring out his wrath on this world, even though it deserves it. You know, he keeps telling this world, I'm going to tase you. I'm going to tase you. <laughs> but it's like he would much rather show mercy and see people come to repentance and people um, receive mercy and then correct their course because of that instead of, you know, wrath. I recently saw another video where I I don't feel like bringing up names because I'm not into the I just don't want the debate of whatever. I saw this ministry where a guy was involved in Satanism and he ended up killing or being involved in killing nearly 400 people. And this person had a injury. So while this person was being ministered to, he confessed to these, um, you know, murders. He reacted to words of knowledge about his life, like the man ministering to him uh, was revealing his life through prophecy and words of knowledge. And this man, who was involved in 400 murders, gave his life to Jesus because of that, you know, this man told me everything I ever did. And not only did that man receive Jesus Christ, uh, if I remember correctly, right after that he was healed of an ailment that he had. You tell me, is that the character that we as human beings have? Would you go to someone who was involved in 400 murders and say, I forgive you, not only do I forgive you, I heal you. You know, we as people would be the first one to throw that guy in the electric chair or, you know, condemn. I, you know, I, I don't know what the Holy Spirit wanted to relate here, but I feel like I'm going to have to let him just share the message with you because what it starts with is God prefers to fix things. This car could have gone to the junkyard, could have gone to the scrapper, could have gone to the crusher, you know? And how many of us should have gone to the crusher? How many of us should have gone to the junkyard to be parted out and destroyed? Yet instead, God chose to put a new heart, a new spirit within us because Jesus' characteristic is love, is mercy, is He prefers to show you loving kindness instead of wrath. So how should we treat our fellow man if that's how God is? You know, shouldn't we do the same? So take away from that what you want. Um, I feel like that's what the Lord wanted me to share. You know, we need to love our neighbor as ourself. And I've been guilty many times of selfishness, of doing my own thing, of you know, getting angry or impatient with people, yet, um, you know, we should strive to be Christ-like and to love our fellow neighbor. Um, you know, go watch this channel I just found called uh, Invisible People. It's interviews with the homeless. 
and you know hear their stories hear why people are out there you know we should have compassion on everyone and not judge by sight you know it's too easy to look at a person and judge and say oh they're um they're living a sinful life you know why should i take any time to show them kindness you know and that's wrong because those are the people that Jesus came to save. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's that's all I can get out of this. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta figure out your own journey, and Jesus is gonna ask you, what have you done to love your fellow man? He's not gonna say, was your doctrine one hundred percent perfect? He's gonna say, did you love people? Did you learn love? That's the goal, isn't it? God bless.